So finally, midday, I find myself at the footpath, right on the edge of Epping. I'm going to head across the fields towards Royden. It's interesting, um, Swain's Green here is, uh, although it says that City of London, it's part of the Epping Forest buffer lands, so not strictly part of the ancient forest. And it says, look, it was purchased by the uh, City of London Corporation in 2005 with Epping Town Council. And here we are in relation. So here's the main block of the forest. You may have seen me walking through it before in previous videos. And here we are here. I'm going to walk that way. This is a walk I've been planning on doing for, you know, a good six months actually. And funnily enough, it was um, a suggested walk in one of the, in the comments. Somebody said, why don't you walk to Royden? So I thought, ah, oh, I'd quite like to walk from Epping and fill in another bit of the OS map that I've not explored. So I've just been waiting for the right time. And after the experiences on the Eastern Avenue the other day, I think I've earned a, a field walk. Of course, as you know, with me in field walks, it's never straightforward, really. <laughs> I never find it easy to navigate across fields. I mean, look. As ever, I think my way is marked by the broken signpost, a little the cracked way. It says a lot about my methodology, I think. Onwards. I love this countryside on the edge of London, though Epping technically is in Essex. And we're going to end up sort of on the Hertfordshire London border. But it's a good place to see the uh, changing of the seasons. It's just started raining very lightly. Some nice borage here by the edge of the field. I remember seeing some of this um, when I walked from Epping to Harlow, a little bit further east. Could even be this from the same kind of spread of seeds, the same, the same genesis. Can you hear that? The rushing water, a faint whiff of sewage. There's a sewage works uh, broadly in the direction that I'm walking. My dear friend Nick Papadimitro would be in raptures right now. He lives for moments like this. substation in the middle of a load of fields. Something really romantic about that in my very peculiar mind. Winter is coming. Road walking in Essex always makes me nervous for obvious reasons, so I don't know what I've got here. Either way, I've either got to walk along the road to pick up a footpath in either direction. All that green stuff is living matter on that sign. There's whole civilizations of bacteria and plant life thriving there. So this is the Cobbins Brook. And it is connected in some way to the local mythology surrounding uh, Boudicca, or Bodicea, however you pronounce it, who is said to have had a camp in the area and mustered her forces here before the grand battle of, uh, with the uh, Romans. Something to do with her blood being washed down into the brook, I believe. So there is a footpath somewhere on the other side of this death road just past the Cobbins Brook Looks like they've tried to disguise it but this must be it It's breaking the hedge here You can always sense when a farmer doesn't want a footpath <laughs> Right, oh yeah look there's the white post on the other side there take me along that ridge of trees there up to that point and then I don't know let me find out it's 
funny when you walk here now, you come off the road with the car zooming past, you've got the pylons that came out here on the central line. And then you think of it in terms of, you know, Boudicca and this being tribal territories and how they would have understood it and what they would have called it and what it meant to them. It's interesting to think about that when you're walking around the edge of a ploughed field. But I was watching Game of Thrones last night, so that might have something to do with it. So actually the footpath goes along the edge of this field here, not along the tree line. This bright yellow lichen is all over the, uh, the trees along this field edge. It makes it look like a very peculiar kind of landscape. This is proper countryside. I grew up on the edge of the Chilterns. This is... Uh, Real countryside and it's right on our doorsteps. You know, this is just on the central line out to Epping. It's here. We can walk for hours across fields. Out in the great British countryside. Just on the tube line. London's countryside. You know, we think of this when you think of London and the London suburbs, but this is as much part of it as the rows and rows of Victorian houses and the tower blocks and Georgian squares, it's also this. The other thing is, there's nobody here. You can wander in solitude, solitary, slow and wayward, in the words of SPB Mays. Certainly wayward in my case. I think I'm already off the footpath. There might be rain blowing in. Otherwise, it's a really beautiful day. Ah, oh, no ambiguity whatsoever here. Nice bit of greenway between these hedges. Out onto the road. And then I think there's another little footpath which takes me through to Epping Green, Epping Upland. This is one of those situations where, according to the map, and my phone, the footpath runs sort of diagonally across this field here, but it's not marked in any way on the fields. And it looks like there's some sort of, well, it can't be crops, but I don't know. It doesn't look as if it's right to walk across that field anyway. So I'm just gonna walk along the edge of it. It takes me slightly off track, but I don't really care. <laughs> Plowing this field to keep up a load of these very sharp flints. It really does flaking to these very sort of sharp edges. Can you see that? Wow, I saw something skipping around in the path ahead of me back there and I thought it might have been a fox, but it could have been a young deer. Pheasant. Now when I was a kid, if I'd been with my dad, that would have been dinner tonight. Well, actually, no, it would have been dinner in about a month after it had been left to rot in the shed. A few years ago, I, uh, I bought a brace of pheasants from the butchers and I uh, rang my dad and said, Dad, how do I know when they're ready to eat? And he said, well, he said, what I used to do, is you'd hang them outside in the shed, keep them away from the dog. And when you could push your finger through the flesh into the insides, it meant they were ready to eat. Pretty disgusting. Needless to say, I cooked them straight away. If you've ever read um, Danny Champion of the World by Roald Dahl, wonderful book. I read it to the kids when they were little. And there, the, the dad, uh, they document the various ways in which you can catch pheasants. And uh, I remember checking it with my old man, and he went through each one, uh, sort of uh, giving a mark on their effectiveness. <laughs> but they do work, a lot of them do work. And what is uh, nice about that story for me is Rod Dahl used to live not far from where I grew up and Dad used to do the garden of the house a 
few doors down from his, Coles Hill. Coles Hill? I can't remember. And so, uh, yeah, the territory described in that book is really the landscape of my childhood, really. And also the things that the dad gets up to. Very similar to the kind of things my dad got up to. Well, I had kind of lost the footpath. But um, this appears to be going in the right direction, wherever it takes me, across this field of horses here. These guys aren't going to be too impressed by my intrusion. The owner of this field has very helpfully laid out this little uh, path with some rope. So I have literally spent five minutes stood at this crossroad going to my map and my phone, the, map, the various apps on my phone. And actually all of these ways kind of work. I started off down there and came back. I could go that way and go back up to Epping Green and then turn up in a big loop and go round. Or I can go down here and then come back that way. I can't really tell the difference. So I'm going to go this way. Now that is a classic example of how I get lost, is after all that deliberation, all the checking and double checking and triple checking, different sources, I go down here thinking it's uh, Epping Long Green and just as I get to the farm I think I'm done to double check this before I go too far and Epping Long Green is up here. The confusion coming that I thought this was the track leading out of Epping Green and this is a, a track that leads out of the bottom of Epping Green, whereas Epping Long Green is further. Oh, that was lucky because up there it doesn't make so much difference. Which way you go along Epping Long Green, I can still get to where I'm going. That way, take me sort of back towards Epping Forest. Phewy, that was lucky. See why my blog is called The Lost Byway, can't you? Boom, found it. So this is Epping Long Green here. So that is where I'm heading, into that dark cloud. Here we meet the Three Forests Way. My first bit of woodland of the day. Really delightful, although I think I'm just gonna skirt around the edge of it. I think this is called Copy Wood. But, uh, you know, knowing me, I could be wrong. Back in Easter, uh, when I walked the Stort navigation uh, out to uh, Bishop Stortford, it's a really beautiful walk. Um, when I got to Royden, I did see the Stort Valley Way. I thought it was really tempting, actually. But I stuck to my course. I only just really got onto the River Stort. So it's really lovely now. I'm on the, the Stort Valley Way. And uh, it's a good feeling, it's good to be on this path six months after I first kind of saw it there and thought, oh, I'd like to walk across there. And now I'm doing it. Now this looks like a really old pylon, doesn't it? It's a bit brown and rusted, aged, stuck out in this field in all weathers. The great sentinels of the countryside. It's interesting, this pub is called the King Harold's Head, which is obviously linked to uh, King Harold's strong association with this territory here. Belcher's Lane, which is a great name, is on the edge of the wonderfully named village of uh, Bumbles Green. Man, they're winning all round here, aren't they? I wonder what other streets there are. I really hate walking across golf courses, partly because of the uh, natural jeopardy involved in it, but then also because of um, the fact that they've got their own landscaping and their own track. It's very easy to get completely disorientated on golf courses. I've nearly always got lost. Man, that was like D-Day out there. 
golf balls flying through the trees everywhere over my head. I don't think I've ever seen such a bunch of hackers in my entire life. I hope the membership's cheap. This isn't very enticing. Bit of an overgrown footpath, but that's what we're dealing with. Wow, I'm actually impressed with myself that I'm still on the Stork Valley Way. Whichever direction I'm going in. <laughs> Hopefully in the direction of Royden. You get a sense when you're in the final phase of a walk. It feels really good actually. It's always my favourite part of a walk, even if the final phase lasts two and a half, three hours. Um, you know, it's always the best feeling. Probably something to do with endorphins, actually, more than anything. It's also a good feeling because we've come over the top of the Epping Uplands and dropped down now along the side of the Lee Valley. I suppose we're still on a, a ridge above the River Lee, but we're going across Nazing, the edge of Nazing here and then dropping down to where the, uh, the river store makes this confluence with the Lee. So this is great territory here. I love this style in the middle of a field. This is live fence. There was once an electric fence running through here. That would make climbing that style a little bit more interesting, giving it a bit of jeopardy. Classic red telephone box. I've seen a few of these out around the similar area, around the edge of Epping, Loughton, Stadium Boys, that way. Amazing church. Apparently, dates from the 11th century. I guess that must be the older bit here, nearer me. Good place to have a rest. Over the stile and onwards towards Royden Hamlet. You can see now how we're getting closer to the Lee Valley floor. Looking across there, I don't exactly know where that is, to be perfectly honest, but um, it seems to be on the other side of the River Lee, or around the edge of the River Lee. That was slightly hair raising, on that little stretch of road there. there. Wasn't any room to walk, cars were zooming around. Anyway, I survived it. And now I've just got to find the footpath again. When you've uh, had a stretch of road like that, finding the footpath, I mean, really, you should get down the ground and kiss it because it's, it's such a relief. Because it feels like it's almost literally saving your life. <laughs> There's a lady back there gathering the, you know, the very long, thin pine cones that you see. Uh, and she was told me she was going to uh, bake them overnight in the oven very slowly, and they open out apparently, they harden, and then give them to the local school so they can paint them for Christmas. So it's really delightful. It also makes you think, bloody hell, somebody preparing for Christmas already. What's the date today? 7th of October. I don't know if it comes out on the video, but I think I can hear the sound of the Rye House Speedway track, which is a good, enough, a good couple of miles away, over there, in that direction. But I can definitely hear some racing. <laughs> Powerful. This is the final descent down through this little patch of woodland which should bring me out by the uh, River Stort Navigation. And there you can see the barges on the Stort Navigation and that's exactly where I sat down there and I looked up here at this field. I thought, wow, I'd love to walk up over there. And I didn't really. <laughs> I've only just come down the edge of this field now. 
So here we are at the River Stort navigation at the beginning of it, which was the, uh, the beginning of another walk I did back in April. A beautiful walk, one of the most beautiful walks of the year. I think it officially marks the end of this walk. It's been a really great walk. I really enjoyed it, but not only that, I really needed it as well. Now I think I'm going to walk a short distance here, or what I think is a short distance, to uh, Rye House Station. This is basically a postscript to the walk, if you like. Um, but that is the Rye House Stadium, I think, by the looks of it. Fantastic, I think that's a go-kart track there. But then there's a legit speedway stadium where they have proper competitive speedway races. <laughs> 